everyone, uh, this is Mike Morello from CBS Eyes Cover Tunes uh, with the fantastically talented Frank Cho here at uh, Fanboy Fest, uh, Fanboy Expo, pardon me, in Knoxville. And uh, we're right. just sitting down to chat a little bit. Um, I heard you had a pretty rough time at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, pretty crazy. It's like I got, um, uh, so I didn't realize, do I look at the camera? Or? Uh, you can look at me, look at the camera. We'll just, we'll just chat, don't worry about that. So basically, uh, I did, there was no direct flight from BWI Baltimore to Knoxville. So I had to fly from uh, BWI to Charlotte and then to Charlotte to Knoxville. Oh, gosh. So because of weather, the plane was delayed like two hours and 15 minutes, so I missed my connecting flight. And then they put me on standby at Charlotte and then uh, for the last flight to Knoxville, and then I didn't get on. And then so basically I said, all right, so I was like one of the last guys at the customer service. Right. And I said, all right, so uh, can you get me a hotel room? And they said, we, we're not going to get you a hotel room. I'm like, oh, why? Is it because it was a weather de delay, not a mechanical. Oh, so it's not their fault. Yeah, so it's not our, we're under no obligation to give you a hotel room. So I'm like, where am I just supposed to stay? Because, uh, you know, because like, I was like, toward like the last, there was like 30 guys before me. Right. And they all got the hotel room, whatever. So I'm like, where am I supposed to stay? They really didn't do a shit. <laughs> or can I cut? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so basically, they, they really didn't give a shit. So I, I slept at the airport. I slept on a bench. I mean, it was like... Uh, it's not funny. It was like, you know, I was like a homeless guy. So I'm like looking for newspapers to cover myself up, you know. But French is dead. So there's no newspapers. So, so I got screwed. So I had a really rough night. Uh... And I was actually surprised I made I made it. Uh, so you weren't here yesterday at all? I came in late yesterday. Uh, my flight came in at uh, like one, oh, and then and I really didn't slept at all. So I went checked in the hotel and I took a nap, and then came uh, towards the end. You were pretty chipper for someone who's been through all that. <laughs> uh, you know, crystal meth. You know. Uh, <laughs> um. Right. So, uh, so you're working on uh, a, a new creator-owned book, I think. Fight right. Girls. Fight Girls. Yeah. Um, I see you doing the interiors for that. Yeah, writing but, and drawing. Yeah. That's amazing. And uh, is that the first time you've done creator-owned stuff since Liberty Meadows? No, I did uh, Skyborn. Uh, oh, that's right. That's I wrote right. and drew Skyborn for Boom Studios. That was uh, last year. That's right. And uh, what do you prefer doing? You prefer doing interiors? Or do you prefer doing covers? So you're, you're still you're still going on the Harleys, right? Well, the covers. I like doing covers. Right. Uh, it's a lot easier. Right. But if the story's right, I like to do the real wrong and the whole interior. Yeah, because it's yours, and then that yeah. way you get to really yeah. own it. Obviously, you own it, but you know, yeah. but still, you get to own the whole visual right. aspect of it. So that's that's very cool. So, uh, what can you tell us about Fight Girls? Uh, I've seen the pages that you put on your Instagram, but Fight Girls is a story that I've written about ten years ago, and I've been just sitting on it. So it's. Um, it's a cross between Hunger Games and uh, uh, Gladiator. Okay. And uh, I don't want to give too much away, but it's uh, these ten women are uh, uh, have to go through this fourth trial to become the the next queen of this vast empire. Cool. So it's kind of like, like I said, like kind of feel like Hunger Games and Gladiator. That sounds great. When does it drop? When do you get a chance to? I think I, I think they told me uh, the first issue is going to come out in February. Oh, cool! All right, so not too long. Right. Yeah. yeah. And never, I never know how long that stuff takes because yeah. I see you sort of churning out two, three pages at a time on your Instagram. Yeah, yeah. So I'm cool. almost finished with issue one now, Great. and uh, it's going to be a five-issue miniseries. Awesome. And uh, Sabine uh, Rich, my colorist, she's oh, yeah. been coloring and sending to me. They look fantastic. That's really cool. I'm, yeah. I'm looking forward to that. I know a lot of people are as well. Um, this is, it's been a little while since we've gotten to see a full. Full yeah. book from you. Yeah, Not yeah. that we don't love these covers; they're right, fantastic. Right, right, right. Well, I mean, you should try the Skyborn. Yes, and I will. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. that's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> um, controversy uh, okay. with censorship. I know that that's yeah. been sort of a, a, a thing that you've had to deal with for a lot of your career. Pretty much, um, yeah. For I think obvious reasons. Anyone that knows the work, I'm sure knows why that might be. Um, but I know you have some strong feelings about it, uh, and I'd love to hear you just sort of rap about that. Uh, I fucking hate censorship. Okay. That's yeah. That's all and, and that's just it. Because um, I think you've been through it with uh, having to close some of your nudes here and there. And, um, yeah. I think there was uh, some stuff that I guess Marvel 
at first allowed, was it Shanna? Shanna, yeah. Shanna, they Shana were going to Devil. They were going to let you do it nude at first and then change their minds? Yeah, so, uh, and even before that, when I was doing Liberty Meadows yeah. uh, from the newspaper, um, right. syndicate, uh, they would censor me weekly right. to, uh, so when I first started off doing Liberty Meadows, uh, you turn in like the first six weeks, five, six weeks of, uh, of the strip. Right. Uh, and then this is before the launch and I got most of the strips back from my editor who little post-it notes sticking saying uh, reduce breasts, reduce buttocks <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh brandy you, know, you need to make her slimmer down you know, but she's too she's it's not the too, character yeah, though yeah. <laughs> and it was just like bizarre stuff so that basically it started my career that's how it started, censorship yeah. and so for five years, I did Liberty Meadows for the newspaper syndicate, and I would get censored every week. And that was part of the reason why I laughed, because I was I just getting, I just couldn't handle the censorship anymore. And then it is sort of the same thing to you with Wonder Woman, is that Yeah, true? and then and I jumped to Marvel, and then, uh, so, Shauna the She-Devil, it was a rated R book, it was a, a Max book, right. Marvel Max. And uh, they basically said, yeah, it's, it's going to be like heavy metal, it's going to be R, and have nudity, and have violence and all that which was great yeah and so I was like uh, I was like three issues into it and when the Bill Jameis got kicked out and then the new guy came over the, the new regime came over and decided to pretty much kill the Marvel Max line oh. and so suddenly I had to like midstream I had to change from rated R book to PG-13 and none yeah. of them got published nude, right? They all yeah, yeah. None of it was published. None of the new stuff got out. Right. And so I had to go back and redraw pages. Oh. And uh, so, I mean, most of it I fixed it on the computer on, in Photoshop. Sure. But some of the pages I actually had to physically redraw. Right. And so that took a long time. And um, but and 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 and, and basically, they're supposed to release like the uncensored. China book because like most of it was drawn right uncensored and uh, and then Disney bought Marvel yeah. and then that killed that product, <laughs> that that book completely I would love to see all that stuff but yeah I mean, I mean, I mean I still get a lot of fans asking me is there gonna be like the uncensored uh, Shauna she devil and I said Nope, but Disney owns Marvel. Yeah, they're and, never going to let that yeah, happen. that's never going to happen. I know, I, I'm always most interested in the process of just artists. It's so, it varies so much in okay. this And I'm just curious of what your process is, maybe even... Um, uh, which process? Uh, you're you actually just sort of sitting down to actually do do your work. Do you listen to music? Do you hide away? Or are you in loud places? That kind of thing? No, I, I like to, um, I like to be uh, uh, alone. Uh, when I'm writing, it has to be silent because, uh, like, it's kind of weird. But I'm kind of like uh, hearing voices in my head, kind of, you know, sure. working out the dialogue. Yeah. And uh, sometimes I actually will verbally uh, speak it out loud. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Sure. Yeah. See if it sounds right. So when I'm writing, I have to be everything has to be silent. Yeah, I understand. But when I'm drawing, um, it's fine. Drawing is, uh, you know, I usually have the TV on or uh, the audio books, uh, music. And I'll just, you know, especially music, I'll just crank it up and I just get into it and just draw. Any favorites? Ah, got it. Or there was an 80s mix on uh, recently with your with your Fight Girls. Yeah, yeah. So, like, <laughs> 80s, not I mean, 80s is the uh, time that I grew up. Right. So, a lot of 80s music, uh, a lot of bluegrass. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my taste is all over the map. Literally. <laughs> 80s rock, bluegrass, sometimes opera, uh, the musicals. Uh, a lot of uh, doo-wops. Uh, picturing so, you listening to opera, drawing like a very right. luscious butt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's an interesting yeah, picture. Yeah, it's, it's a very interesting right. picture. Right, right, right. <laughs> a fat lady, you know. <laughs> but still, cool though. Yeah, um, and uh, even, even big band music. I, I, my taste is just all over the map. Do you have a different process for things like things that are very detailed, like the ballpoint beauties, as opposed to something that's a little bit more simplistic, like the interiors, or is it the same no matter what? Play me. Um, so, like when you're doing a, a sort of a, a showpiece, like for instance, this this Wonder Woman print, right, right. Um, with obviously a lot of detail and stuff like that. Yeah, the Wonder Woman cover. Yeah. Do you find that uh, 
do you, do you find that there's a different kind of focus on that as opposed to some of the just, um, I don't know, more simple line sort of stuff that we do? Uh, it's sort of like two styles. So. Yeah, yeah, it's two very different styles. No, I mean, once I get into it, it really doesn't matter. Pretty much the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, it's basically trying to hit that uh, it's kind of weird kind of had to hit that flow. Yeah. Once you kind of get in that flow, you just, you know, you just ride. It just goes. Yeah. Then yeah. it's 4 o'clock in the morning and you forgot, <laughs> forgot where you were. Oh, no, no. Okay. I'm a night owl, so I actually, uh, I work from, uh, I usually start working around like 9 uh, till like 4 in the morning. Oh, right. Okay. And then I go to bed around like 4, like about a little after 4 and then wake up at noon. Just to make sure you don't see dawn. Yeah. I used to used to write music all the time, and I would do the same thing. Right. Because then I have no distractions. Like, okay. I can be as loud as I want. No one there to bother me. Exactly. And then exactly. I can go all night. And as long as, but I felt like as right. long as I got to bed before the sun came up, right. I still felt like it was nighttime. Right, right, right. right. I didn't feel so bad about being yeah. awake that late. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly. Easy stuff. <laughs> So, what? so I sell vintage stores, right? Right. And I co-op in the antique store in town. Yeah. And we live in El Paso, right on the border of Warriors. I walked in one day to put some stuff away. This was that? I thought, bro, you better get it right now. And they told me it came from Warriors the day before. This is an actual mallet? From a circus in Warriors. <laughs> really? Yeah. What, were they, what did they use it for? Probably a murder. murder. <laughs> it's, you don't read the news a lot, do you? It's Warriors, man. It's right, Warriors. Right, right. I know that, I think I've heard that Frazetta is one of your influences. But, uh, yeah, Frazetta was a big influence. Uh, so, I started collecting comics in 1983. So, uh, the first comic I, the big comic that really, uh, the artist that just stunned me, just stopped me in my tracks was uh, Don Newton. Oh, okay. Don Newton, uh, Batman, uh, Detective Comics 509. Okay. Batman versus Catman. Yeah. So, I remember as a kid, I picked it up and I was just like stunned at just just the, the art right. of it all. So, uh, Don Newton is a big influence. Uh, John Buscema, Frank Rosetta, yeah. uh, Al Williamson was another huge influence. Um, Wally Wood for a lot of the humor type stuff. Uh, Walt Kelly, yeah. when I was in Liberty Meadows, a lot of that uh, figure work. Um, and uh, so for the more intricate line work is uh, uh, Franklin Booth. Okay, yeah. Um, a certain degree, uh, uh, a lot of degree, uh, uh, Bernie Wrightson's uh, Frankenstein. Absolutely. Right. Amazing stuff. And, and I think it's, it's, that's an interesting sort of rounded out list of people because you, you don't yeah. have, we don't technically have a, an art sort of degree background. You didn't go to school no, for no, I, I have a, yourself. I have a bachelor degree in nursing. <laughs> okay. I have a nursing degree. Uh, but yeah, I'm a self-taught artist. Uh, so the thing is, like... Uh, People, um, people ask me, like, how do you learn how to draw? And to me, you can't really limit yourself to comic books. Right. Uh, so, lucky for me, at an early age, I kind of gravitated toward art outside of comics. So, I mean, so I looked at a lot of uh, classic uh, illustrators and painters, like uh, John Singer Sargent, uh, N.C. Wyatt. Uh, Rockwell. Rockwell was a huge influence. Um, Pretty much all those guys, right? And even uh, Christoph Klimt. Oh, absolutely. And uh, Alphonse Luca. Fantastic. So all those guys. Absolutely. So like people say, yeah, who should I study? I say study everything. Yeah. yeah. And then eventually you'll sort of develop your own style. You clearly have your own style. Oh yeah. But, but yeah. there's reminiscences of other things in it, yeah. as, as there are going to be. Yeah, exactly. It's definitely your own. And that's exactly. that's awesome. Exactly. Um, a self-taught musician as well for the same reason. Yeah, exactly. Everyone always says, oh, go, go, go learn theory. I said, you know, though, right. if I learn theory, what do I what do I lose of my creativity? Right. When I become mechanical, then I lose a little of the creativity. Right, right, right. I don't want to right. necessarily do that. I'd rather be shitty and creative right. than, not, that's not a flush right, on right. you, that's just a flush right, right, on no. me, than maybe more technically savvy, but less creative. Right. So, I mean, it really is, to be honest with you, it, everything is like in a, it's like a cycle, like a, yeah, it's like a circle. Yeah. Uh, it's like, I sometimes wonder if I would be a, a different artist if I actually went to art school. Right. But um, I really don't know. I mean, just like all, all my tastes 
I know what I like right. at an early age. So even if I went to art school, I, I think I would have naturally gravitated toward the stuff that right. I like. Right. You know? I know I hate abstract art. I mean, I can't stand modern art. So I would have been, you know, I would have rejected that right away and went to a more realist, uh, representative art. Right. That makes sense. Is there anything that you'd want to, is there anything that you've never done that you'd really love to do in the future? Some just sort of... I mean, like comic-wise? Maybe. Or maybe not. Just just art-wise. Or, or not. You want to be a nurse? <laughs> you use that degree to be a nurse? Uh, I'm, I mean, I actually thought about, you know, I, I kind of want to write and direct movies. Um, I actually uh, wrote and uh, directed a short horror film for, like, uh, um, uh, to get a, a directing gig. And then the whole uh, 2007, the housing market first and all the finance people just kind of disappeared. Right. So, um, I would like to maybe get into the movies business as a director. Um, but the yeah. thing that I really want to do uh, outside of comics is paint. Yeah. I want to be a fine art oil painter, you know, which, I, which, I, which I'm doing right now right. just for fun. Sure. So I'm painting a lot of landscapes. People say, landscapes? <laughs> What I like. Work for Bob Ross. I mean, yeah. we, we can do it. I mean, like, you know, like, uh, like big giant landscape, like uh, Thomas Moran and uh, oh yeah, and uh, uh, Albert Bierstadt. You know, yeah. those guys are those big epic, grand, absolutely, and grand scale paintings. You almost feel like you're there because if you're you're standing in front of it, you don't really right, get right. in your periphery. You can't get the edges. Right. You, know, you right. feel like you're you're there. Exactly. That's fantastic. Like, that's if you're gonna paint uh, paint landscape, don't paint small. You gotta paint big. Yeah. yeah. That's great. How, how about in comics? Is there anything that any project that you would really love to work on? I mean, you have the, the great advantage of being able to create your own stuff. Right. But is there anything, any character you'd love to do that you've never been able to do? Or? Uh, yeah, two characters that pop in my mind right now is uh, uh, Conan. I love uh, Savage Soul Conan. I Absolutely. Was a, I was a big John Buscema fan, especially the Buscema and uh, uh, Rudy Mabry's uh, inking. Yep. That was fantastic. Yep. So I would love to have done like a black and white Conan with the ink washes and oh, stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Great, yeah. And, uh, and your cross-hatching style is perfect for that. Exactly. Oh, man, that exactly. would have worked out great. So when I joined Marvel, it was like they they let the Conan license go, which was like really stupid as hell. It was. I mean, they got it back now, but yeah, yeah it was just idiotic. But uh, of course, I didn't. I couldn't do Conan. And uh, the second book that I would have loved to do was uh, Fantastic Four. Because I was a huge fan of uh, John Byrne's Fantastic Four run Fair uh, back in the '80s, and then because of because of my love for John Byrne's Fantastic Four, I went back and reread the original uh, Jack Kirby Stan Lee uh, Fantastic Four, and they're both amazing. Uh, so I would have loved to have done uh, uh, Fantastic Four, but I never had a chance. I think you'd probably be able to name your ticket eventually. <laughs> the, the popularity that you've got now, you'd probably you'd be know. able to do that. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, like, it's so... All the books are so... Everything's tied into the movies. That's true. A lot more um, bullshit uh, hurdles that you have to go through, yeah. you know? Yep. Bureaucracy. All the, yeah, all the editorial control. You can't have things say this or do that or smoke this, you know? <laughs> yeah, show but, too much skin. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly. So... Just Quick. It doesn't have to be crazy, but it would be fantastic if I could do that. I happen to bring a Conan book, which is... Draw Conan? Do you want Conan? Whatever whatever you would like to draw. Yep. Actually, 
this is more uh, Neil Adams Conan than uh, <laughs> than John Buscema. It's Frank Cho's. Yeah. This can be your. Uh, <laughs> will be the audition for you to do Conan eventually. I would love to see you draw Conan. Wow. It's one of my favorite books. The old ones and and have you read this stuff? The new ones? Uh, some of it. It's actually been really good. It feels very much like those 70s and 80s sort of Roy Thomas stories. Oh, you're talking about comic book. I thought you were talking about novels. Oh. oh. Yeah, I mean, I, I saw the uh, the one that Ron Garney did. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was fantastic. Ron Garney is another fantastic artist that uh, I really enjoy uh, uh, his, his art. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Well, because these guys are tough guys. Is that it? There we go. There you go. Everybody, that was the very gracious Frank Cho giving us some time for CBSI. Um, unless you have anything else you'd like to plug or add? No. Nope. Very much appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you so very, very much. Thank you.